Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Matus here at Caring Medical Florida. I want to talk today about SI or sacroiliac joint instability um, on motion scanning. And I actually have a couple of recent patients that I want to show you too that I thought were pretty interesting. People with SI joint instability oftentimes complain a lot of low back pain, maybe kind of even radiating into their buttock area. Sometimes they'll feel like it clicks and pops and shifts or if they're doing repetitive activities where they have to bend and twist, it could be like laundry, loading a dishwasher, shoveling if you live up north. Any of those activities are oftentimes common triggers for people with SI joint problems. The way that we evaluate for SI joint instability in our office is with motion x-ray. So we actually, you're going to see this, do an x-ray where the person is rotating, kind of mimicking that natural position that would strain the SI joints, and then we measure it. So here on this x-ray, this is the first patient I'll show you, right in through here, these canals on either side, those are the SI joints. So as the person rotates, what we're gonna actually see is you kind of open up a little bit more and we'll actually take some measurements there. That's the left side and then over here on the right side. So in this patient, when we measured it on the left, we got about seven millimeters and then on the right, about four and a half. A normal SI joint is usually about two to four millimeters with the average being three. So on this patient in particular, they actually have SI instability on both sides, more severe on the left. Now, this is actually just a graphic of the ligaments that connect that SI joint, kind of hold it together. So it's not just one ligament or like one tiny piece of tissue. I mean, this is a big joint. Lots of ligaments come into play as they work to stabilize it and hold it together. So if somebody has injured these or stretched these out, so they're kind of like floppy rubber bands, they can't hold those bones together as well as they should. So when they rotate, that joint is gonna open up more than it should. People often ask me, well, how did I do this? How did I hurt my SI joints or stretch out these ligaments? And what I often say is because we work with chronic pain, so it's not always pinpointed to one injury. So I'll say, well, you know, could have been a big force in a short amount of time, like if you were in an accident or you had a big fall or something like that, or it's just these little forces over time, these repetitive injuries that build and build and build until your body can't compensate anymore and you have a lot of pain. This is another um, still from another patient with SI joint instability. So again, this is this patient's right side, kind of similar to the last one we saw, about four and a half to five millimeters on the right. And then when we look on the left, all about three and a half, let's say. So that was actually really cool in that patient to kind of see, hey, you do have an asymptomatic normal side on the left but you've also got right-sided SI joint instability. And I think that's important too, because not everybody will have instability or even the same degree of instability on each side. It could be different just depending on how that person was injured. In addition, of course, to the ligaments that are the primary stabilizers of the SI joint and the, your low back and your pelvis, of course, there's also muscles that stabilize that area as well. And so when people do have pain in that area, that's where this motion x-ray really comes into play. Because if you, if you really have stable joints there, then it may not be a prolotherapy issue, maybe more maybe physical therapy or chiropractic. Or patients that do have instability, sometimes we kind of have to utilize a combination of any of those therapies to help stabilize the area and get them better.